everyone, my name is Miranda and the books are falling and today I'm here to review Harry Potter and the Cursed Child which is a new play from Jack Thorne written somehow in correlation with J.K. Rowling and if you haven't read this book and don't want to be spoiled because we are hashtag keeping the secret you can check out my non-spoiler review which I will leave a link in the description box down below for you to check out. No spoilers in that one, you still get all my thoughts so go check that one out and I will see you in the future on this video. Bye for now non-spoilers! So this book I kind of touched upon it in my non-spoiler review. I was not really looking forward to it because it's not actually a for realsy Harry Potter book to me. It's a play. It's not written expressly by J.K. Rowling. Like yes she probably gave the okay on the ideas and came up with some of the ideas but it's not her book. So I had an issue with that. And then reading it honestly none of my issues were really soft. So it takes place 19 years later but we kind of get a fast forward to when Albus is in his fourth year and that was very jarring because it's like these new characters, these new relationships. We get Scorpius and Albus, Scorpius and Rose, Rose and Albus and it's like these new characters that the book hinges on but like we miss so much so much of their like crucial development period at Hogwarts. We miss the first three years so it's like I don't really get it like I'm just kind of supposed to roll with what we've got like Scorpius and Albus are best friends which I love I absolutely love Scorpius he was a doll and Rose is kind of really rude which I didn't get because I feel like Ron and Hermione would raise her better than that like yes Ron probably said some things about the Malfoys but at the same time I feel like they wouldn't believe that he's Voldemort's son and I feel like they especially wouldn't let Rose go around believing that so for her to kind of swing that around I was like that's a tad weird so it was hard for me it was hard for me because I really wanted to like Rose and I ended up not liking her. Just I felt like she was super annoying and super privileged almost. Like she almost acted like a Malfoy and I didn't like that at all because I feel like Ron and Hermione would have raised her a lot differently than the way she was acting in this play. Then we also have Albus who literally... Albus. I, I get what Albus is coming from honestly. He is the son of Harry Potter. He's dealing with a very heavy legacy. He has two very heavy names to carry with him, Albus and Severus. So I get that he's dealing with a lot, but Albus was sort of a whiny little biatch at points. Like, there's teenage angst and then there's like you're just crying like and being like woe is me for no reason and Scorpius kind of calls him out on this but way too late like at the point where I'm just done with Albus and even after he does it Albus continues to do it and Scorpius is like oh you're starting to do it again so let's just move on and I'm like no we need to address this situation so he stops doing this. He feels like it's him against the world. He doesn't understand that like there's other people and I guess that's a fine lesson to learn but like 300 pages of a book for you to learn it is a little too long for me and not only that but it's not like he's an only child. He has his sister Lily and his brother James. There's people he could go to that he could have talked about this. There are other people besides him who are struggling with carrying the Potter name. Like James and Lily I'm sure make it look easy but they're also Potter children so don't you think that maybe they could bounce this off of you Albus? They could help you and talk to you? And because there was no like sibling relationship development it just felt really weird because I feel like James, as much as he teased Albus, was like a great big brother in my mind. Like from what we got in the epilogue of Deathly Hallows, I feel like you could see that they all really cared about each other, those three. And for them to kind of be left to the wayside in favor of James and Scorpius's relationship, I don't know. I just, I didn't love that it was kind of Scorpius and Albus against the world. Albus was super, super self-centered. I mean, the whole thing with Cedric annoyed me because, like, that was just so victim-shaming to Harry. Like, they were all just being like, you killed Cedric, you did this, and I know there are people in the Harry Potter universe who believe that. I'm personally not one of them because I don't think Harry did anything. Like, it's not his fault that Cedric was there and died. Everyone makes their own choices. Cedric made his own choice, and he probably lives with that every single day. So I didn't like how nonchalant everyone was that they were kind of acting like, oh, Harry doesn't think about Cedric. Like, Harry probably thinks about Cedric and all the other people that had to die for him every single day. So don't act like, don't throw that in his face, Albus and everyone else. Like, don't act like he's just some, like, I'm the boy who lived, I'm so awesome, because he's not. He knows what people did for him. He even has a line where he's like, how many people had to die for the boy who lived. Like it's ridiculous. Is it really worth me living? So it, w it was just annoying that part. The whole Cedric thing in general, I mean it was kind of cool but at the same time like I've read the time travel plot like five million times and I know that it never ever works. So when they're like we're gonna go fix time, I'm like no you stupid idiots aren't. You're gonna try and save Cedric and mess up everything else because you cough near someone's ear and then that gets them sick and then Ebola spreads and the wizarding world dies. And lo and behold, not exactly that but that's what happened. These changes that they try to make affect it so much and I don't know I don't know I don't really get it I mean I like Cedric I think he's a great guy and I for reals he was like oh when he saved them at the end because he is a good guy but unfortunately he had to die like that was his that was his thing that he just he made it he brought 
he kind of spurred Harry into action because he was like, Voldemort is insane. He killed Cedric. Like that started Harry's whole moody broody phrase and that's what kind of kicked the whole plot point. So unfortunately as much as a good guy he was, he needed to die. And I just, I don't know. I, I don't know about this book. That's my biggest thing. I knew Delphi was going to be bad, but like immediately I was like, I don't trust this bitch as far as I can throw her. So that wasn't really surprising. And then just, I don't know. I don't know. These characters didn't feel like the Harry Potter characters to me. And for me, this just, this isn't Harry Potter. This is fan fiction. This isn't canon. And I know there are going to be a lot of people that disagree with that, but just reading it, these aren't these characters to me. They don't have the feel. They're very much more, particularly Harry, Ginny, Ron, they're more like the movie version of themselves, which was like a tempered down version of the real them. Ron is a lot more jokey. Ginny is a lot more just like does nothing basically. She has a few good lines at the end, but other than that, she's just kind of like the Stepford wife. And I was like, what are we doing? The only thing that I could really say I enjoyed about this book was seeing the relationship progression of Draco and Harry and how they kind of made amends and were kind of like, we've been fighting for so long, it's dumb. Our children are best friends. Like, why are we doing this? So I like that. And I feel like at the end, the book kind of redeemed itself, but not in a way that, like, I liked. It was just, like, a good ending for the crappy beginning of this book, you know? Like, it's not, like, a good ending. Like, I'm like, that was a great ending. It was just, like, okay, they managed to save this horrific book. Because I was literally ready to give it, like, one star at the beginning. I thought it was awful. Albus, like, annoyed the ever-living crap out of me. I was like, you need to grow up. Like, every single other person is dealing with a situation like you, and you're just being so blatantly rude and ignoring them and you're just living in your little white male privilege bubble like oh my gosh I was just so freaking done with Albus. Scorpius was beautiful. Scorpius I feel like doesn't even like he deserves a such better friend than Albus. Oh my good gracious he was amazing and I don't know I don't know overall this it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It wasn't what I expected it to be. And it's not Harry Potter canon for me. I'm never going to consider this to be like, oh, this is where they are nowadays. Like, sure, I'll say Albus is Slytherin because I don't have any problem with that. But, like, other than that, I'm like, no, nah, this, no, nah, this isn't, this didn't really happen. There was, like, blatantly, like, big scenes that were from the movie. So I was like, you didn't even write this. You just rewrote what the movie had. So that was annoying because it was like, this isn't even completely original. You're just taken from the movie. So... I don't know. I was just super not impressed with this. And I can't even say disappointed because I didn't expect it to be good. So just super not impressed and not happy with it and not happy with Albus and his little whiny self. I, I don't know. I would give it three out of five stars is what I eventually ended up giving it. But still, I definitely like... I don't know if I'd recommend it for a Harry Potter fan, you know? I would be like, just take your seven books and be happy with it until she actually decides to write a book, if she ever will. So I think that about does it for my thoughts on this book. I definitely have a lot of them, definitely some strong, angry reactions. So if you have any thoughts, whether you loved it, hated it, were iffy about it, just please feel free to leave your thoughts about it down below in the comments, your favorite parts, your least favorite parts, what you thought in general, and also make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel down below to make all sorts of new videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!